the Queen and her son, Prince Charles, did not have a warm and cozy bond and the pair are said to have a rocky relationship over the years, an explosive documentary has revealed. Prince Charles, the Queen's firstborn, was notably distant from his mother throughout his childhood. A new Netflix documentary, The Royal House of Windsor, claims Charles was not close to the Queen growing up and was usually cared for house nannies and royal staff while his mother served as Queen of England. Penny Jr., author and royal expert said, the Queen, to be fair to her, was being Queen. For most of Charles' childhood and the rest of his life, she was on a pedestal and he did not have a warm and cozy relationship with his mother. Queen Elizabeth II was coronated in 1953, a year after her father King George VI died from coronary thrombosis. Following her father's unexpected death, Elizabeth was immediately thrust into royal duties, fulfilling her role as the Queen of England and head of the Commonwealth. At this time, Charles was only four years old and his mother, the Queen was notably absent during his childhood while she fulfilled her royal duties. The prince was reportedly cared for by nannies and other palace staffers while his mother was away, and also became very close to his grandmother, the Queen Mother who helped raise him. The Queen Mother influenced Charles' perception of the throne, drilling its importance to him at a very young age. According to royal experts, the Queen Mother wanted to avoid a repeat of her son, the Duke of Windsor's rebellion to the throne. In 1969, Charles gave his first TV interview, explaining how his future wife had to fulfill an equally important role in the royal family. Speaking to Cliff Michelmore and Brian Connell from the BBC, he said, It's obviously a problem because you've got to remember that when you marry, in my position you're going to marry somebody who perhaps one day is going to become queen. And you've got to choose somebody very carefully I think, who can fulfill this particular role. Because people like you perhaps would expect quite a lot from somebody like that. And it's got to be somebody pretty special. Charles also had a rocky relationship with his father, Prince Philip, who tried to implement a tough demeanor into the future king. Ems Jr. added, I think what Prince Philip wanted in a son was a man in his own image. A man's man, a rough tough outdoorsy real alpha male. And what he got in Charles was a really sensitive child. The Queen has arrived at church without Prince Philip yesterday and was seen in an animated display in her car. Dressed in a royal blue dress coat and matching hat, the Queen was seen raising hand as she sat in the back seat of her car. With one finger in the air, the Queen is seen raising her hand, clad in a black glove, as her fellow passenger looks on and her protection officer in the front seat turns around. But the Queen soon was seen smiling and waving to royal supporters. Flashing her pearl earrings and feathered hat, the Queen accessorized with a pearl necklace and elegant brooch. Although Prince Philip was nowhere to be seen, Prince Charles, 69, and Camilla, 71, were seen driving to the church in Scotland. Camilla, dressed in a pink coat and hat with tartan scarf smiled as Charles drove the couple to church. Throughout the summer, the Queen has been seen regularly attending Craddy Church in Balmoral as part of her annual break. Earlier this month Philip, 97, was seen enjoying a solo country drive around Balmoral. He joined the Queen, 92, in Scotland at the end of August for their annual summer holiday. According to The Sun, an insider said, he no longer shoots after having a stent in his heart a few years ago, but he loves fishing and sometimes stands hour hours in the River Dee. For his age he's as fit as a fiddle. The Queen will return to London soon before heading to Windsor to celebrate her granddaughter Princess Eugenie's upcoming wedding. Prince Philip, despite a long-running feud with Eugenie's mother, the Duchess of York, is expected to attend the ceremony at Windsor Castle amid claims the Duke of Edinburgh and Sarah Ferguson have buried the hatchet. And the royal outing comes as Ladbrokes release their favourite odds for the wedding on Friday, October 12. The color of the Queen's hat always generates a flurry of bets, blue is the favorite at 2-1, followed by pink 3-1, orange 4-1, purple 5-1, and green or yellow at 6-1. She wore a lime green hat with a purple feather and matching dress coat for Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding.
A spokesman for Lad Brokes, plenty of punters cashed in on the Queen's last hat but we reckon she'll go back to blue this time out and have cut the odds accordingly. The Queen's visit to church comes after her official bagpipe player left his post for family reasons, leaving the monarchy without a wake-up call. Her Majesty has been without her official bagpipe player at Balmoral Castle for more than a month. Pipe Major Scott Methven left unexpectedly due to family reasons. The bagpipes wake-up call is a tradition dating back to Queen Victoria. The Queen's first openly gay footman has stood down after reportedly being demoted for courting publicity. Ollie Roberts, 21, was required to accompany Her Majesty on all her carriage rides and carry out other duties like collecting her mail at Buckingham Palace and walking the corgis. The former airman was told he would be bumped down to an ordinary footman after the palace became concerned about his increasingly high profile, with several articles in gay publications. They told him his profile was becoming too high and he wasn't there to draw attention to himself, a royal insider told The Sun. The insider claimed Roberts had considered his future for a couple of days and then decided to step down, feeling angry at his treatment. He thought about it for a couple of days then decided he should quit. He feels badly let down when he was proud to be gay in such a good job. Buckingham Palace declined Mail Online's request to comment on the report. Roberts did not comment to The Sun and has deleted his Instagram profile. The former Ruff Airman made his first public appearance at Trooping the Color in June. Roberts later appeared shortly afterwards accompanying the monarch on her outing for Royal Ascot. He had posted Instagram photos from the grounds of Buckingham Palace hinting at his new role. The appointment of Roberts, who was born in Wales, was heralded as a step forward for LGBT people who hailed it as another sign the royal family had embraced modern attitudes towards sexuality. The younger members of the royal family in particular have been praised for their stance on the issue. In 2016, Prince William appeared on the cover of Gay Magazine Attitude, and used the chance to speak out against homophobic abuse. No one should be bullied for their sexuality or any other reason and no one should have to put up with the kind of hate that these young people have endured in their lives, he said. The young gay, lesbian and transgender individuals I met through Attitude are truly brave to speak out and to give hope to people who are going through terrible bullying right now. The Queen made similar statements in her speech at the state opening of Parliament this year, which was written by the government. My government will make further progress to tackle the gender pay gap and discrimination against people on the basis of their race, faith, gender, disability or sexual orientation," she said. The Queen Mother had several gay servants, including perhaps her most well-known courtier, William Tallon. He spent half a century as the friend, confidant and unofficial master of ceremonies for the much-loved royal. The royal household currently has six job vacancies listed on its website. These include a liveried helper to look after the horses on the royal muse and a sous chef at Buckingham Palace. The Queen's cousin, Lord Ivar Mountbatten, became the first member of the royal family to have a same-sex wedding on the weekend. He married his partner James Coyle at a country house in Devon, with his three daughters in attendance. No members of the royal family were present. Although Prince Edward, who went to Mountbatten's wedding to his ex-wife Penelope Thompson, sent his congratulations. He was unable to attend in person due to a diary clash. The Queen has been faced with a shock drugs scandal after one of her guardsmen tested positive for cocaine. Tranpreet Singh Law, 22 failed a random drugs test at his barracks as results showed high levels of cocaine. Guardsman Lal has been discussing it openly in the barracks, a source told the Sunday the guards carry out public duties at the palace, it's disgraceful behavior. It is for his commanding officer to decide if he gets the boot, but anyone caught taking Class A drugs can expect to be dismissed, they added. Law made headlines in June when the Sikh wore his traditional headdress instead of the bearskin but now insiders claim that the palace is embarrassed. 
he was put in the limelight and now he's brought only embarrassment, they added. The news comes as U.S. tabloid The National Enquirer published an article claiming several substances including crack and cocaine were found within the palace. The queen and her grandsons were sickened to hear crack and cocaine were found in the palace, a source told the publication. The source claimed that Kate and William were particularly concerned especially for the welfare of their young children. The inquirer alleged palace officials had demanded that security be stepped up and the palace swept for drugs as the thought of the children finding any illegal substances is unbearable. The publication also claims that they found several illegal substances inside the palace, after it was opened for its summer tour. It's not the first time the palace has been embroiled in a drug scandal. In 2014, actor Stephen Fry claimed he had snorted coke at Buckingham Palace. Thank <laughs> you.